In this screencast, we solve a transient heat transfer problem, comparing the lumped capacitance method to the more accurate analytical method. So we have a gold sphere with a certain diameter dropped into a water bath. We're given a velocity, an initial temperature of the sphere, and we want to know how long it'll take for the center line temperature to reach 310 K. In order to determine the appropriate method to solve for time, we need to check what's known as the Biot number. This is the ratio of the convective to conductive heat transfer. And the easiest way to solve a transient problem is to use lumped capacitance. Lump capacitance assumes that at any point in time, the temperature is uniform. In other words, it only changes with respect to time. So at any point in time, the temperature throughout the sphere in this example will remain the same. However, in order to use lump capacitance, we need to check this B out number. And the cutoff is usually if the B out number is greater than 0 0.1, you cannot use lumped capacitance. So our plan for this problem first is to calculate that B out number. Then we're going to use this equation, which is lumped capacitance, and solve for time. Then we're going to use the analytical solution and solve for time that way. And where do we see time in the analytical solution? We see it in this Fourier number where we have time here and we use alpha, which is the thermal diffusivity in order to calculate time. Once we've done that, we'll compare the two and see how much of a difference there is. The first thing that we're going to do is calculate this B out number. Although it is given to us with a characteristic length of the diameter of the sphere, whenever we're looking for this number in terms of judging whether to use lump capacitance, we use a more conservative approach such that our characteristic length is the radius divided by 3, and this is all divided by Rk. And if we calculate that out, we find that this is 0 0.26, which is greater than 0 0.1. So this tells us that we should not use lump capacitance. But let's go ahead and do that and compare, see what the difference would be if we did use the lump capacitance incorrectly instead of using our analytical solution. So let's go back to our equation for lump capacitance. We find time by calculating the density of the gold times the volume of the sphere times the heat capacity of the gold divided by this convective heat transfer coefficient times the surface area of our sphere. And this is multiplied by the natural log of T initial minus T infinity divided by our final center line temperature T at zero minus T infinity. For a sphere, the volume divided by the surface area is just R over three. And when we calculate this out, we find that this is 2.1 seconds times the natural log of Ti minus T infinity, which is 110, divided by T sub zero minus T infinity, which is 20. And this ends up being 3.6 seconds. 
So that would be the time we would get if we use the lump capacitance method. Let's see instead what happens if we use an analytical solution. The equation for that is the dimensionless center line temperature is equal to a constant times exponential of another constant squared, this is minus that, times the Fourier number. Where do we get these constants? Well, we get them from looking them up as a function of the BO number. But here, the BO number is based on R rather than R over 3. And so that's calculated to be 0 0.77. Our Fourier number, if you recall, is equal to alpha times t over r squared, where this alpha, the thermal diffusivity of the solid, is 127 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. So let's solve for our Fourier number, and from that we can get our time. So our Fourier number is going to equal minus 1 over this first constant squared times the ln of our theta sub 0 star, which is t0 minus t infinity over ti minus t infinity. And this entire quantity here still under the natural log is C1. So let's look them up for a BO number of 0 0.77. We find that the first constant is 1.48. Our C1 is 1.24. So when we calculate this out, we find that our Fourier number is 0 0.876. So our time is our Fourier number times R squared divided by our thermal diffusivity. And using this way, we're going to end up with a time of 4.3 seconds. So when we compare the two times, 4.3 and 3.6, we'll find that the difference in using these two methods is almost 17%.